Sounds in good, good condition. It was used yesterday, it was water put on last night and thoroughly mixed in and let it stand overnight. What you're looking for, you grip it in your hand, the brakes nice and clean, crisp, and brushes off your hands without sticking. Right, we're going to move the pattern again for the hiding head. I've had a bit of sand the pattern, put some more draft on so it'll come out to sand easier. I'm going to put some real massive gates in this time and see if I can get a, a decent casting out. At the bottom of the box, the bottom of the box is called a drag, you put the pattern in. It's important powder. Once again, the first layer of sand, put through a riddle to get any the metal out from previous casts with aluminium and bronze. It's the sort of thing we're trying to avoid, a little bit of, bit of brass. Okay, I've firmed on the pattern, ordinary sound on top of it. Ram it in place gently at first. Pattern doesn't move. Okay, once you get the box all rammed down full of sand. You strike it off, strike it off flat or strickle it. Strickle it in. There you are. Excess sand goes back into the box. Keep all the mess in. Most of it. Got oh, pattern powders in there, or oh, patterns in there. The other half of the pattern goes on. It's got dulls in that locate it. Goes under there like that. Top half of the box. When he goes one way, the locating pins are offset. Right, I'll take that off. I've cast it several times and it's always shrunk back there. You see, I've got a massive gate on there and it's still shrunk back. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a riser on there, what they call a cool metal riser. So, when it fills up, it'll fill that up with metal. That'll go back in, that'll help the and I'm going to do another one I'm going to put a massive hot riser on there see if that helps I've had problems like this before I did a big steam engine cylinder and bronze and I had a hell of a job uh, once we realised what was happening uh, we've got it sorted and we were able to cast it no problem we'll put our top on once again, pot and powder Some more pattern powder stops the sand sticking to the pattern and stops the sand sticking to the sand where the two boxes join. Okay, we've got some pasta, some sand riddled on top of it, top of the pattern.
Right, that's a pattern covered in nicely, nice soft clean sand. Ordinary sand around to hold the riser in place. Gently at first, but things sort of get fastened in where they're going. Right, so we've got, we've got a hot metal riser, and I'm going to put a cold metal riser on top of there as well. I've rammed the sand down, I've scraped back and exposed the top of the pattern. Get some sand around that just to stop it, stop it moving. Try and keep it in, keep it in place. Keep it on top of the on top of the pattern. You don't want it moving. Once you get a bit of sand around it, it uh, it'll hold itself in place. Right, we've got it all rammed up. Scrape it flat. Strictly flat. Strike it flat. Make it flat. That's a bit the patterns under. You put some vent holes in, help the sound breathe. Try not to hit the pattern. So now we've got a hot and cold riser in there. We need a sprue in, which is a hole to pour, pour the metal down. Tube makes a good, good screw cutter. Right, that's into the into full depth. Right, so we want these out now. If only get a little bit of sand goes down in the hole, then we'll worry about it, we can sort it out later. I'll try not to get too much down there. I've got cold metal riser out. It's actually, it's actually ground sand into a taper. I've got draft on it so it comes out the hole easily. Our edges so nothing's going to fall down. That's the hole where the metal's going to go in. So we need a, a pour in basin so you can hit the hole. It's important when you're pouring, you want a nice steady pour. You've got to keep it choked, keep it full. Having the hole makes it easier. You firm it down, you want no bits of, bits of loose sand that's going to fall down the hole. So the metal's going to go down there. It'll go through a, a runner into here, through a gate, into a wall cavity, fill that up and fill that up. And hopefully that will stop it shrinking. Just keeping the bench off.
Right, box of port, flask of port. Sand. Right, so the metal is going to come down with down with sprue into here. We'll put a cavity or a basin in there. The idea is any bits of shite and dross get caught in there. Nice deep basin. From there, we'll have a runner. Into there. Take my sand out. Right, then from there, we need a gate into the mould. Nice big deep one. Right, then we need the pattern out. Wrapping the pattern, tap it around, it starts to move, loosens it up. Nice and loose, and easy to get out. Lift the hooks. Gently lift it out. Straight up, pretty good. Finish peeling off. Walk it. Need bits of sand, come loose. You need to get them out. Oh, you clumsy bastard. Use a bellows of a kid's airbed. Don't use an airline, you'll have no sound at all left in the box. And that's all the loose bits out. If you don't get them out now, you're sure you're going to fall off. Put that somewhere safe. Need a pattern out of this. Once again, wrapping the in. Two hooks. Gently lift it out. Nice. See, there's a big old straight through there where your cold metal riser goes. Well, hopefully, this is going to do the job for us. Then we're going to get it back together. The 
last chance to make sure there's no loose bits. I guess any, any loose bits, any bits of sand that go down and get stuck in that hole. Looks good. And put it back together. And, uh, get a cast this afternoon, hopefully. If this doesn't if this doesn't work this time, a couple of cable ties just to fasten the mold shut. I'll put weights on it as well. Right, I've rammed, I've rammed the second box up, just the same as the first one, turn it over and we're going to try casting this one in a, a different way. Once again we'll put the other part of the pattern on those dowels. And what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to put a massive hot riser in. That's going to go there, there'll be a sprue here for the metal to go down, a runner into here, then a short gate into the pattern. So this is going to be full of molten metal which hopefully won't cool off as fast as the pattern and it should remain liquid as the pattern solidifies to feed it hopefully to stop any shrinkage you can see the area of that riser compared to that one it's massive I had a big steam engine cylinder with cast in bronze I had exactly the same problem and we we'll managed to cure it with this method once again Coop, top of the flask, the coop, important powder. You see if, if neither of these methods work, I'll put a core, I'll put a core in the round part of the pattern, the round part of the mould. Plenty of that in. Right, so that's going to go in there, like that. Just enough for another way, just so I can get something in to ram it down, which will probably be that. Right, we'll put some saved sand on there, ram this box up. Very gently first until you get then we get things settled down. Right, we're run down. A bit of wood I chose for me. Alright, that's a bit around the short side, but I can't see the end of it then. Better dig it out. in the yard. Try and dig it out. There it is. It's again the area where the pattern is. Some ventilation wheels. Sand a bit more porous, shut any gases. I don't want that bastard over there now. Yes, it's, got a, it's got a tape around it so it should come off not too bad. Like that. That's alright. Right, so that's our, our hot metal riser, that'll fill up with hot metal and hopefully feed the casting as it cools down. 
to try and stop our shrinkage. We need a sprue to get the metal into the into the job. We'll put it across here. Stainless steel tube make excellent screw cutters. Like that. Right, take it apart. Get the bench off first. Great work like this, all the mess could be contained in a box. Again, we're all my bit's going to fall in. <coughs> Get on the top, lift it apart. Right, once again, I've got basin to catch all the any bits of sand that get down the hole, a bit of shite, bits of dross. You always get a little bit. Right from there, we want a runner for the metal to run round into the See what the what the pollen pole has done to the top of my head. Turn the hair grey. Great. We're going to get a serious amount of metal through there. The pattern out. Once again, wrap the pattern with a wrap iron just to loosen it up in the loosen it up in the sand. At least the pattern comes out easy enough now. Gently lift it out. Knocking the edges off. Pretty good. Tidy this, tidy our gate up. There'll be a serious amount of metal burst over there. That kind of frees off that bastard. And use corners, take them off because they'll fall off as soon as you put them all together. Blow it out with the bellows. Not much work as I want to cut up on top of it. I'm going to cut into the top as well, put a gate into the top of the mould. Into there. So we'll get fed with a lot of so there's plenty of metal to feed it as it cools down. You've got to make sure you haven't got more metal in the riser than you have in the cast. Otherwise it can work the reverse the reverse. 
we can end up pulling the metal from the from the cast into the riser. Right, pop note. Once again, wrap an iron. Wrap it about a bit. Loosen it up. Gently, nice, <coughs> tidy up uh. tidy up uh, gate, see any loose bits, get them off because they'll fall in, round, you try not to get square edges, try and get nice rounded edges, so there's a chance of the rounded edges breaking. The bit there wants to fall off, look at it. Take it off now, because it will fall off. Right. Get the bastard together. There's paint marks on the box, so they can't go, you can't go wrong. Well, in theory, you can't go wrong. Let's get a pass. Let's pass it together. I mean, that's a colossal, colossal riser, that.